the first principle, I'll mention, these are known to many of you, but they are kind of baseline, I'll mention them briefly. The basic, basic principle is milieu control, which means controlling all communication or attempting to in any environment. And then a second principle is what I call mystical manipulation, hidden maneuvers uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, third, a demand for purity, division of the world into pure good and pure evil. Uh, there is an ethos of confession, because if somebody is kept confessing, you can, can, you can achieve control of the his or her guilt and shame mechanisms, and there's no greater control that one can achieve over another human being. Another principle is that of the sacred science. These groups are not content to claim absolute spiritual truth, but must combine it with what they take to be absolute scientific truth. That's very true of Om Shinrikyo. Uh, there is what I call the loading of the language, a rhetoric and a language that only permits the claims of the particular group to be expressed. Alternative claims are blocked out by the very language. Uh, there's another principle, that of doctrine over person. It's very obvious, uh, but not when you're in the middle of it. And that is that any doubts or any critical feelings that one's accurate personal perceptions inform one about are attributed to one's own shortcomings, turned back on one, and that's again another uh, control of guilt and shame. And then uh, one has to embrace the doctrine rather than one's personal uh, discoveries. And finally, the most uh, dangerous dimension of cultic behavior, what I call the dispensing of existence. And that really means that cultic groups so embellish their own claim to absolute truth that they divide the world into those who have a right to exist and those who have no such right. Now, uh, that may be just symbolic in many ways in terms of favors or whatever, but it can become much more dangerous and even murderous uh, as it did with Om Shinrikyo.